Psychic TV is the musical voice for the Temple of Psychic Youth, an occult sect with ties to Crowley and practically every other Satanist of note. For example, the following dedication was made at the beginning of one live album, the 11th in a series of 23. We'd like to dedicate this concert to Alex Sanders, who died today, the full moon of Beltane, who was known as the King of the Witches, and who was the man who made witchcraft and magic legal in Britain after a long struggle. So we'd like you to remember that. But the war goes on! Yeah! Coyle also puts forth a cult philosophy rooted in Crowleyana. This album embraces two themes near to the great beast's heart, homosexuality and the worship of Pan. Probably the most devout Crowley cult of all is Current 93. The album and song Crowley Mass ridicules Christ and his birthday and suggests an alternative, October 12th. The beast of Pan. Their Here Comes Antichrist album contains bizarre and ritualistic music that defies any explanation other than that they are quite serious about their Satanism. Etched into the vinyl is both the Latin and the English for He Comes, Soon You Shall See. We've had people who hallucinated. We've had people become violent for no apparent reason and not understand why. Music is very powerful, and it doesn't have to be a recognizable form. The power in and of itself of any sound is enough, which release specific chemicals in the brain and body in order to alter the state of consciousness. And I think that's what music was originally. In ancient times, we had a different consciousness. It wasn't the kind of consciousness that we have now. When people made sounds, they could see other beings still. We only forgot to do that when we developed Western language and perspective and architecture. Our consciousness changed. When you drop this chemical bomb into your neurosystem, you are cutting up all your previous inherited perceptions of what we call reality. Everyone suddenly has shamanic experience for a couple of dollars And finally, there's the testimony of rock and roll's most focused, committed, and articulate neo-pagan, Genesis Peorage. In the occult magazine Gnosis, he enthusiastically described a life-changing experience he underwent in Nepal when he became the first Westerner to be invited into a particular shrine to the Hindu god Shiva. Then this priest anointed me with this tilak, Peorage remembered, and I got this really fast freeze frame of the shrine, animal intestines, and mummified human heads, and incredibly powerful, very dark-edged materials, pools of blood, and it was really dark, and he started chanting. As soon as he started chanting, it was like Terence McKenna described DMT. I just went, woo! instantly into this completely altered vortex, shooting into this deeper and deeper blackness, floating in liquid blackness, the ultimate blackness, black beyond black. And then I became really aware that somewhere within this ultimate black were these two shiny, slightly pointed, almost insectoid eyes. Shiva watched. After years of studying the occult traditions of Crowley, and Austin Osmond Spare, of ingesting powerful psychotropics and practicing sex magic, ritual cutting, tattooing and piercing, cross-dressing, filing his teeth, presenting occultic and obscene performance art, playing the techno shaman, putting the satanic Anakian calls to music and relentlessly blaspheming God, Peoridge was finally ready to come face to face with the spirit behind it all. And he consciously did what so many others do unconsciously. He embraced the darkness. That's why people get so excited at the rock concert and tear up the seat. It's because their metabolism is being governed by the bass and the rhythm and the light.
And that's what it's all about. It has reduced down in the West for the first time to a ritual which admits to and utilizes the most arcane and ancient methods for achievement of altered states and a celebration of that contact with others. And let me say something here in closing. Don't write off Peorich or any of the other people we've just looked at as some nutcase from whose life you can't draw any personal inferences. All he's done is go for the gusto, taking the essence, the ideas that gave rise to our modern rock and roll world, and then just chase them to their logical limits. To put it another way, he's splashing about in the deep end of the pool of do what thou wilt rebellion, while most moderns just dangle in their feet or wait about in the shallow end. But whether you dive in or just dip, you still belong to the same club. And one day, unless you repent, give up your membership, you'll find your eternal destiny in the same place of which Eric Burden, our Columbia University student, and Genesis Peorage caught but a glimpse. <laughs>